this is Hal Ruth, and this is your Equalizer 9 Tip of the Week. Your Tip of the Week this week is you must play all four quarters of the game in order to win. Seems to be sort of common sense. Uh, if Let's imagine football. Uh, let's say your team just doesn't show up for the first three quarters. They just mail it in. They're down 50 to 3 at the end of the third quarter. What's the likelihood that they're going to pull off some miracle comeback in the fourth quarter and win? It's very slim to nil, right? Of course it happens every now and then. That's why we see on ESPN Sports Center when someone comes back from a big deficit in the fourth quarter, whether it be football, basketball, or baseball, or whatever. When they come back late in the game and win from a big margin down, it makes Sports Center. Why does it make Sports Center? Because it's so rare that it happens. And so it's the same when we're doing business development, when we're trying to win projects on a negotiated basis. It's the same thing. And what I'm going to demonstrate to you is what really happens and why we have to play the entire game in order to be successful. Uh, first of all, I'll tell you, you've heard me say this before, in the, in the AEC industry, the win average, the win rate average is around 20%. It might be a little higher now because the economy has done so well, but around 20%. Where we want to get to is in the 40 to 50% range. That's where we want to live, and it drives a lot more profitability to our company. But here's what happens. What I've found is one of two things is what typically happens with the companies that are winning in the 20% and lower range. And even you do it, even if you're in the 35% range, you're doing this occasionally as well. And we need to stop this behavior. And here's what I'm talking about. There are two behaviors that are the problem. Here is what I call the funnel. Now, everybody has a sales funnel. Uh, projects come in at the top, they go out the bottom, it's a win or loss. Pretty simple, right? But here's what happens. First of all, let me explain. This is pre-game. We'll call it the first quarter. These are the things we're conditioning the market, knowing and working our market. That's where we generate our leads and our pursuits. Then we have early game. I call it conditioning the client or solidifying the relationship. Call that second quarter. Third quarter, middle game, conditioning project working the deal. And then we have what I call in-game, which is the fourth quarter, which is triggered by a buying trigger that the client triggers. In other words, the client will do something that says, I'm getting ready to make a decision in the next 30 to 60 days. This could be, I'm issuing an RFP, I'm issuing an RFQ, it could be, uh, come make a presentation, it could be something informal, just, hey, come over and let's negotiate, or it could be, hey, give me your fee and general conditions proposal. Something that they have indicated that says, I'm getting ready to make a decision. That would be the equivalent of your fourth quarter in a game, okay? But here's what I see happens uh, a lot. A company hears about a project early, uh, it enters their pipeline, they may go see that client and talk about, hey, we, you know, we sure would be interested in doing your work for you. And the client goes, well, you look like you, um, you know, have the right portfolio and experience to do it. That sounds great. And then nothing happens for months and months and months. And then you're in a meeting and one of your colleagues says, hey, where's that project ABC that's in our pipeline? Uh, what's going on with that? Huh, I don't know. And you might make a phone call and say, hey, when, when are you going to be issuing an RFP? Client goes, I don't know, maybe in the next month or so. And then all of a sudden, one day in your inbox, you get an RFP from that client. And that would be the buying trigger. So basically, you have done very, very little uh, in, in this whole game, I call it, first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, you've done virtually nothing. And then all of a sudden the RFP comes in and you and your team look at it and go, man, this project fits us so well. You know, we have a team that would be perfect to build this. We've done projects just like this before. And you know what? You're probably right. You may be the best suited company to build the project. But the problem is this. When you are doing nothing except waiting on an RFP, the other competitors were working their tails off in order to move the probability in their favor during these first three quarters. During the pre-game, early game, and middle game, they were working their tail off. They were meeting every decision maker. They were doing their client data mining. They were introducing their superintendent and project manager, or if you're an architectural firm, you know, introducing the project manager and the design team. 
You know, they were doing all these right things, developing a win messaging plan, developing the executive summary to go tell the story, go, taking them on tours of other like projects, and countless other things to move the probability in their favor. In other words, your competitor may have started here with a 20% chance to win just like you have, but by the time the buying trigger happened, they're sitting in a position of a 50% chance of win, and you are still at 20 or maybe even have went down, and you don't even know it. And so you make the foolish decision to push forward and go through a lot of proposal, which count has a lot of time and energy from your, your marketing team and from your from your ops team. Maybe there's general conditions that you have to put together. Maybe there's a budget to put together. You have to pick, figure out who your team is, build your resumes, all that stuff. You know what I'm talking about. A lot of money spent. Then they say they shortlist you and want you to come present. And you have all this practice time and prep time. And you think you do a great job and then you lose. Why? because you are already behind going into this fourth quarter. So far behind, you're not going to be able to catch up. So that's one scenario. The second scenario is worse, um, or but equally detrimental, is that you knew nothing about the problem. In other words, your pregame was awful. You didn't find out about it. You didn't do a good job prospecting. So literally, it wasn't, the project was not even in your pipeline. And then all of a sudden, in your inbox, probably from the architect, not the client, is, hey, this would be a great opportunity for you guys. And, and it enters your pipeline right here. I call that a rock through the window, or in this case, a rock through the funnel. You didn't even know about it. Or maybe you'd heard about it, but you'd done nothing with it. And it enters right here. Let me tell you, I don't care how equipped you are to build this project or how perfect your team is, you're going to lose because someone has been playing the entire game. Probably more than one has been playing the entire game. So that is a losing behavior. If you want to know the biggest reason why some companies have 45% win rates and others have 20, bam, that's it. What you need to do is you need to learn the winning behaviors and play the entire game and move the probability in your favor. By the way, we've studied this. If you're winning right here at this buying trigger, if you're ahead, there's a 67% chance you're going to win the project. Now, you might say, well, how do I know if I'm winning? Well, you know if you're winning or you're close to winning. And if you have no clue who is in the league, then I promise you, you're losing. So I ask you to really take a hard look. Are you playing all four quarters of the game? Uh, this is your Equalizer 9 Tip of the Week. Thank you. So I would love your thoughts on this week's Tip of the Week. So please comment. We can start a conversation. Again, I'm Hal Ruth. Thanks again and be looking next week for the Equalizer 9 Tip of the Week.